Every comic's got their own origin story. I think that's when I was bit by the radioactive spider. Like that moment, I thought, what is that noise? Did I do that? My first paid gig, um, in fact, this may not have been the first one, but it's the first one I remember, was for a promoter called um, Agraman, which it took me 10 years to work out was an anagram of anagram. Uh, I just thought his name was genuinely Agraman, like some sort of weird word superhero. And uh, he was running this gig up in Manchester called The Buzz Club. Uh, and uh, I was, my main role at that point was to drive acts that were funny to gigs, right? But if you did that, sometimes you would get um, on the bill of a decent club. And I took this comic, we drove, it took us ages to get out of London. It was like a four hour drive. And I think I did five minutes uh, for the sake of a nine hour drive, but he, he gave me 40 quid in cash. And I just thought, that's amazing. You know, it's amazing that I would get paid money for doing this ridiculous thing. And it was a proper gig, you know, people having their nights out there. And that's one of the things actually that's always stayed with me about comedy is I always sort of get a buzz about being part of someone's night out when you see you know, people have got, you know, uh, done up and, you know, got their hair done or they're wearing nice suits and all that. You think, I kind of, I kind of get something out of that, whether it's corporate events, gigs or touring. I suppose I was sort of funny as a kid, but not, not like the funniest among my mates, which is something I know comedians often say. Uh, sometimes we're being disingenuous secretly, we think, well, I'm the funniest, but I'm, I'm, I never really have been. And I remember when I was um, about seven, um, we was at a holiday camp in the Isle of Wight, and we had this thing, called, sorry, this feels like a massive segue here, but I promise you, I will come back to a point. He's, um, he's, uh, it was the best cowboy competition, and I don't even know if that's a thing, you know, you, looking back now, it's a bit weird, you know, grown-ups asking you addressing sort of Stetsons and Holsters, but whatever, right? It was the best cowboy competition, and uh, I, I went out, and I, it was sort of oversized what I was wearing, so I was dragging this kind of holster, the Stetson was over my head, I looked ridiculous, and I'd heard a lot of the lads say, uh, like, my name's Chet, and I come from Texas, and I, I misheard this, and I thought, oh, I, think, I think I know what they're doing here. So I went out and went, uh, my name's Jeff, and I come from Essex, and then all the grown-ups all the grown -ups laughed, and you'd think that the message there was that they were laughing at me, but I took it as they were laughing with me. And, and I think, you know, every comic's got their own origin story. I think that's when I was bit by the radioactive spider. Like that moment, I thought, what is that noise? Did I do that? And uh, yeah, it took me a long time before I knew how to sort of make that noise happen again. Yeah, when I started talking about my politics, which was back all the way in 2013, do you remember the, the coalition years? Clegg mania? Do you remember, was that a real, I don't think that was a real mania. I think the real mania was thinking that Nick Clegg could be Prime Minister. Sort of madness that temporarily <laughs> descended upon us. Um, yeah, it was just weird because that was a time when things weren't quite as um, adversarial as they are now. And I was, you know, I was in comedy and I thought, well, I voted, you know, a way that a lot of the country have voted. It seems odd that no comedians ever talk about that fact. I knew for a fact certain other comedians have voted that way. Not going to, you know, we, we, we could have uh, we could have a sort of pull quote here and a, and a story if I just suddenly started outing people like a sort of political version of Stonewall in the 80s. But um, but yeah, I knew that it happened, obviously. Not every single comic was Labour voting. Um, so I just spoke about it for a while. Um, and I wasn't very good at it. Uh, my jokes, when I look back at them, were, were not funny. Uh, but it was kind of a buzz to talk about it, so I did it at the Leicester Festival. I got nominated for Best New Show, and um, I carried on talking about politics for a few years. And, and it was only really, I guess, around about 2016 when we all wanted to talk about politics. Well, uh, not if everybody wanted, wanted to talk about it, but we all found ourselves talking about politics where it suddenly seemed to be a thing that people wanted more of. And then I did, you know, Question Time, and um, then I did the MASH report that year, you know, that was, had a, was a high profile new topical format for the BBC. And, uh, you know, I did, did Mock the Week uh, the, the year, year after. Uh, you know, I won the only performance on that, they didn't have me back, but it's fine, I'm over it. And, um, and, and yeah, I just suddenly was in that world of talking about politics. But what was interesting for me was that I'd spent a long time being a club comic, you know, something I loved and, and still enjoy doing. So whenever I do live work, 
if I do talk about topical stuff, it's only one component of what I do. You know, I think the first, the first sort of uh, priority is to entertain, and and certainly if it's club, you know, if it's your tour show, that's one thing. If it's club comedy, and in particular, in a way, uh, that sort of uh, corporate type event, is that there are a lot of people there from different reasons, and and, and really. You know, you want to plot a way through, not a safe way, but an inclusive way. Uh, you know, you want to, I, I try to look at subjects for events like that where everyone's got skin in the game, you know, uh, quite broad subjects, but give them a, a kind of unique treatment in a way. I mean, a lot of the, the events that I have done, the, the bookers have sort of, or, or people involved with the agency have sort of said to me afterwards, oh, some of us were worried you were going to come out, you know, and try and start, start a rally. I say, yeah, yeah, I just, my mate. <laughs> I just want to be funny first and foremost and I know that you know especially if it's like your company's night out right if it's your awards first time you're seeing people in different regional offices that you don't normally see a Christmas do if it was me and a geezer went up there and went gosh so the goings on in Westminster I'll be like uh, you know kill me now I think you've got to be mindful that in this era when people have got lots of streaming services, you know, t terrestrial TV audiences aren't what they were, people are all watching their own stuff. So the odds, you know, say you've done, you know, live at the Apollo a couple of times, you know, I'm, I clearly just dropped that there. By the time it's gone, we'll have done it. Uh, you know, you might have done, have I got new TV and stuff. But, but the sheer number of people who've watched that now is very different to 10 years ago. So I think unless you're, you know, Michael McIntyre, it makes sense to go out and, and presume that people won't necessarily have heard of you. And kind of that can be a good thing too, because people can. It's a great. The great thing about when I did club comedy is was the pleasant surprise element. Is you go out, no one's heard of you, and you bang out this twenty-minute set, and people go, "Well, it's as good as anything when I'm telling you." Go, yeah. I mean, it's the same twenty I've been doing for the last ten years, but it works, right? But good thing about sort of like corporate type events is the bespoke element of it. I think is 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 weirdly. It's a more creative endeavour than club comedy because club comedy, as I just said, a lot of people will keep their club 20 minute set fairly static. But when you do a corporate gig, or certainly for me, the best gigs that I have, the most enjoyable ones, is when you do a bit of research, find out about who the people are, what the sector is, who the personalities are going to be in the room, and try and play with that a little bit. So, pound for pound, if you're doing like a you know, 20 or a half hour, set you're, you're likely to say more different things in that situation than you would uh if you were doing even even your club or your your touring show um i did a, an event recently where there was a lot of overseas uh, uh sort of colleagues in that, that people have bought in for a meeting and, and they had some incredibly cool names really cool like joan esposito or something like that Names that we'd all love as British people. And then I noticed, so I read some of these names of, of some people that were in from Brazil on one table. And then on the other table, it was, I think they were from Altrincham. And I'm not, not knocking Altrincham, again, a little bit, but um, there was a guy on that table called Trevor Mudd. And I just thought, that is the absolute scale of names there. And I knew instinctively, you do this long enough, I knew Trevor Mudd would find that funny. You know, I'm honouring the overseas guest as well. There's nothing negative in that. You know, I'm saying that we all think Brazil is cool anyway, ever since that advert where they were doing keep ups with mobile phones or whatever. We just, British people generally think Brazil is awesome. And, and, and kind of like it's a way of honouring your guest and kind of, you, you know, playfully digging out somebody. Because of course, you know, he's, this guy's name, it won't be the first time people have brought up the fact that he's called Mr. Mud. With corporate bookings, I think the thing that you're looking for when you arrive is, is set up, you know, first and foremost, because that's the thing that gives you a chance. Can they see you well? Can they hear you well? You know, are you close to them as, or as close as possible? Because you accept that some uh, events have situations where they need a dance floor or, or certain things. And so you, that's the thing. When I get there, that's why I always like to go and do the rehearsals and stuff, because I want to have a look at the room. You know, that's the thing that will settle me um, a little bit. And then bit by bit, you reassure yourself, you meet the Toastmaster, they're, they're, they're great chaps to have about, you know, if it does have one, or you speak to the guy from the company who's, uh, who's gonna bring you on. And, and that's often a chance to let them know, because often they're really sweet, they wanna give you the biggest build up. And you go, actually, that is, you know, this is Britain. You build me up like that. There's only one thing British people wanna do. If you go, this man, he's done, they haven't got news for you, live at the Apollo, MASH report, he's got a medal for this and blah, blah, blah. They're just thinking, all right, okay, all right, come on in, mate, yeah? 
just keep it nice and simple. I mean, the best thing to say is you may or may not have heard of him. He's done a little bit of telly. Yeah, you know, and then just get just get you on because it's you start there and you can work your way up. Um, so those are those are the potential challenges. Um, but I think you know at the moment the, the production values of corporate events are, are, are wildly improved upon what I started doing. You know, you get these sets and. You get these, you get screens now, you know, and it can feel like quite a, a snazzy thing to do, you know. Some of them feel like being on the set uh, of a TV show, and then you think, well, if all of those things are in place, then that's when my job begins. And my job is to get out there, you know, get people engaged early. And 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 one of the things I like most is because sometimes they are disparate groups of people. Is that feeling when you finish? It's not the applause you get right at the end. It's after that when people are buzzy. You know, they're standing up. They're talking to each other. They're talking to people from different tables. There's a slightly different uh, air in the room when a corporate event has gone well, and 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 that's a nice feeling. It, you know, you feel like you helped loosen people up a bit, and and I think that's that's a great that's a great outcome. Well, if you'd have seen me in Bridgewater at my tour show, you'd think absolutely yes. Um, I went all that way and they stared at me. That was my own touring crowd. So the short answer is yes, but not, not for the best reasons. I, I think they can be a, a very you know, sparky. They can be a very interactive affairs. I, I think it is you know, important to acknowledge that you're starting from a different place. Like the level, you know, corporate events could be anything from one person in that company who li likes something you did on YouTube they're probably, they're always terrified because the moment they're like, oh, I'll book this guy, right? So you always say you've got a responsibility to that person. Or a few people on the board think you're funny, you know, or though you were recommended. But then that is then something you have to sort of transfer that trust to a much larger group of people. Whereas, whereas tour shows, the pressure is normally, the hus for me, you know, maybe the husband likes what I do and then you see, you see a lot of partners go... This guy, you know, and then, and then that's who you've got to win over, right? You know, because they might have this anticipation of what you're going to be as a comic, and um, across, you know, across more than a short clip, you're you're hopefully going to be you're going to exceed their expectations. So in any any great stand up, right? And this is what you know, I'm, I'm striving to be is someone that will be lots of different things within the space uh, of the time that they're on stage. So, so yeah, I think that the rush of nailing a corporate I think is up there with the best feelings in comedy because you know that there are specific challenges to it but equally you know that it takes a certain level of experience and know-how to do it well.